it's in July. Yep, let's talk about Christmas lights because it is right around the corner. And if you are thinking about starting a Christmas light business, now is the time to start thinking about it. And tonight, I'm going to go over all the steps that we need to do to be ready to start our Christmas light business so we will be ready to go in November. Um, yeah, I said November because usually when you're first starting out your first year, you start out in November. And so I remember when I first started my Christmas light business, it was, um, it was October. Um, actually, I started it a little bit before then. I went to the huge convention and Josh Latimer was there and he was talking about Christmas lights. And I'm like, man, I need to know about more Christmas lights. And this was in August. I'm like, I need to know more about Christmas lights because I'm starting to have full-time guys and I need to hire people so that I can work year round. And so how do I get going with Christmas lights, how do I get this going? And so I researched, I found some stuff. Um, I did some little bit of training here and there. Um, and the person I went to training with, you know, they, it was a lot about the stuff, but the dude that was giving the training gave us a lot about the marketing side of things and how he got leads. And that's the number one thing that is about this business is, is how do we get leads how do we get more leads so that we can close more leads and do that? But before we get started, let's see. We got Chad in the house. He had already seen. I seen him over on Facebook. It said that already. Um, booking for October, which is amazing. And yes, you can do booking for October. Um, if you can get them on the schedule now, it is a good time to get them in October. So then that way they are up and looking good and making it amazing. Um, first year getting nervous, but excited. They are exciting. Um, it can make you nervous, but just push through. Don't worry about it. There's no reason to have nerves. It's just a matter of just doing it, you know, and that is awesome. And then the second year, and we got Mr. H2O, and it's his second year, too, of doing Christmas lights. And so these are going to be awesome. And let's see what we got here. Should new GMB say Christmas lighting or holiday lighting? Also starting permanent lighting. Um, I would probably push more for the um christmas lighting install install but that's not always the case it could you're up in indiana so yes i would be pushing for more christmas light install than holiday lighting um because it's more people talk on home christmas lights up there um how well you do your first year so after i did my training um i was with a program and they're like oh we're gonna get you leads and Oh, well, we got to wait till October. It, usually leads don't come till the end of um, October. And then the next thing, oh, it's Chris, it's Thanksgiving. And so it went on and won. And by the time I did my leads and everything, I ended up doing 40 jobs, um, 39 jobs, right at for $39,000. So I was right at a, an average of a, a $1,000 per job. And um, it did take some time to get stuff going. Um, we, I ended up using Home Advisor to get leads that first year because, you know, it's like anything. We got to get leads however we get leads. And so, you know, most times people go to the training that I put on. And I always tell people, if you do the work, you do the stuff, and especially if you can start now getting your GMB, and I'm going to talk about that, um, getting our GMB and getting our marketing going now, it will help us out tremendously. So in the in the comments, let me know what year that you did start it and how much did you do your first year, rather, or how much did you do last year? Let me hear what you all have done. Um, and so I went through and... Like I say, I ended up doing 39 jobs right at $39,000, and it was an, an experience. You know, I thought, man, there's no way I can do more installs than that. In my second year, I ended up doubling that. I was almost over 100, and I think we did 110 the second year, and it went a lot faster. Once you learn the, the stuff and the ropes, it, it definitely goes a lot faster and so it definitely is a way that you can make decent money doing christmas lights i've had several people do over a hundred thousand their very first year and they don't even have no other business and so this is something that 
for sure that you can do. 40, then year 280. Yes, absolutely. You can do more than that. Last year was our first year, part-time, 30,000 for 30 jobs. Um, average is definitely going up this year, and that's a, that's a big thing. All right, so let's get started a little bit about what all do we need to have a Christmas light install business? What are some things that we need to do? And, and so first off, why Christmas lights install? You know, Christmas light install is an amazing business to get into. It is something that, you know, it is something that you can go out there and make money during Christmas lights. You know, a lot of times we might think, Oh, I don't know if I can do that or not. And, you know, it is one of those things that it is an amazing Christmas light business. This is something that, you know, how do I know? How do I was actually talking to Donovan the other night of, you know, what is what is your what are your thoughts on even the even the, you know, the downturn of things. And do you think it's going to be it? And as of right now, he's got people booking right now at five, seven, ten thousand dollar $10,000 jobs. And so, you know, we might have to scale down a little bit. We'll see how things go. Um, and we'll just have to see how we got to go. So that is kind of why the Christmas lighting business. The next thing is, is we need to identify our target market. When we're talking Christmas lights, for instance, Cincinnati is a big circle, pretty much. It goes all the way around 275 Loop. And not everywhere are your customers. Our customers were the northeast side, um, up by Loveland, up in that area, Indian Hill, um, Westchester, Mason, mostly on that north side. And we had a pocket way down here in northern Kentucky. It was a little pocket. And so we have to know where these pockets are. Where do we have to target? You know, these people up here, they're by the Kenwood Mall, and it has the Apple Store in it, and it has all the high dollar. Um, I mean, this is where the wives don't work, none of that kind of stuff. This isn't a two family, two story, or a two family working house. This is a, the wife stays home. The, um, you know, these are our customers, right? Those are our customers. They have kids. Um, and you know, those are some things that we need to make sure that we are, um, hitting those customers. We have to find those customers. We don't want the customers that are every, you know, our pressure washing customers are not our Christmas light customers. It's just a fact. Um, so we got to find these customers. So we need to do target market. We need to look up and see, you know, you can go to the post office. Um, you can go to the post office website and look at the zip codes that, hey, their average income is over $100,000. That's probably a pretty good start to place to be. Or the average house is over $400,000. <coughs> Before the housing market went up, our average house was over $300,000. That's who we were targeting. Now that houses went up crazy a little bit, that may have... Um, changed a little bit, but um, the, those are some things that we, obviously we had to do. Um, and then the next thing is we need to set up our business. We got to set it up um, as an LLC. You can go through the state to get this set up through the state. Um, and that way um, you will keep your liability off of you. Um, and if you have assets, so we want to have it on its own LLC, um, insurance. If you have another business, we can add on Christmas lights or we need to get live general liability insurance for Christmas lights. Um, and so this is some things that we're going to need for that. If we're going to have employees, we need workers comp, um, that way we are working up on roofs. There's chance that we're working on ladders. Um, there's chances of falling off, so we definitely need to make sure that we are working with an LLC. So that way, you can um, you you or um, you got to have your workers comp. Um, and then this is the next. This is probably the biggest thing about all of this is is we got to create a marketing plan and we can create that right now um we can start planning out for marketing and even if you're doing this for next year if you've done it in the past we can do marketing now of post of uh, christmas cards we can start sending christmas cards in july and that way um we're getting them to start booking up for october so then that way 
when October comes around, we are booking up, we're getting things done, we're making sure that um, we are moving the needle so that way our October's booked up and we clear out our November. We really don't want too many installs in November if we can get them in October. Now, not everybody wants them up in October, but we got to get them up in October so then that way it leaves more room for November. Obviously, we can start doing our Google My Business. Um, if you've got a Google My Business, don't change any name. Don't change none of that stuff. Um, it will get suspended. Um, it, Google has been suspending everybody here lately. So we don't want to get it suspended. So we want to make sure that um, we do that. If we're getting a new GMB, obviously you can't have it at a PO box. You can't have it at a, um, a co-working space. You can't have it at a UPS store. Um, I know some people that do, but obviously it can, it'll can it get suspended on you pretty quickly if you're not careful. So have it at a location if you can. Um, you may have to do it as a service business and you don't have your address on there. Um, it won't do as good, but it is what it is. And if you're going back up here to naming your business um, as the um, setting up your business entity, if you're going to do like if you have a pressure washing company or you have a landscape company and you're going to add Christmas sites, you can add it as a DBA. Um, and so doing business as this, so that way it's set up through the state. So then when we set up through the state, then um, it won't get rejected as easy. So um, I would highly, it is good to kind of be like Christmas light install Cincinnati. It will rank better for you um, in the end, but it can get, it can get uh, Kung Fu chopped if you're not careful. So make sure we're doing that. Um, once you get your Google My Business set up or Google Business Profile, we need to make sure we are posting even now. Go ahead, if you did it last year, start taking those pictures and we'll start posting pictures now. Um, and we're just going to post a couple through as we go. Um, we're going to do our Google Business posts. We're going to do two, three a week for the, the next several weeks because if we get this, um, if we get this going well, it will hit us huge. You will be ready to go when it's go time. If we don't do this now and we sit there and we um, pander around and we don't do it, you will be behind the eight ball. So we need to make sure that we are getting this stuff here on time. Um, we can purchase um, um, equipment and supplies. So we need ladders, the goat or the um, pitch hoppers. I know a lot of people um, are doing the pitch hopper this past year. The year before it was the goat. Now it's the pitch hopper. We got our cougar paws. We got extra padding underneath of them. We got the slip on covers out of that. Which one is your all's favorite? Is your favorite the cougar paws or I'm sorry, the goat or the pitch hopper? How, or how many have tried to use the pitch hopper? Let me, and how do you like the pitch hopper? Um, let me hear how, what you say in the comments there. Um, so we can start supplying, get our supplies, you know, if we get do some starter packs, stuff like that. Um, those are some things we can do. And then obviously we just, uh, pitch hopper by far. We got, um, he liked the Facebook user put, um, that's awesome. Um, so way more mobile. They definitely are way more mobile, um, and do very well for us. Um, and then the last is, is start installing lights, right? We, when October comes November, we start putting lights up. This is not the time to start marketing is in that time. Um, obviously in our marketing plan, you know, we want to have yard signs or we're going to do Google ads. Um, those are two good things at work. Um, like I say, when I started, I did use home advisor. It didn't do well after that first year. Um, I didn't like it at all. So, you know, we just kind of got to think about what we want to use, um, for getting leads because at the, because the most important part of this, uh, business of getting Christmas sites is getting leads. If we want to get the eight to $10 to $12 a foot, um, for C9s and different things, we have to get leads. If we're not getting leads, it's definitely not going to be good for you. Um, and, you know, once you start getting leads and you get lots of leads, then you got to figure out how to, 
you know, get through those leads. Um, and some of that is coming down to, you know, we're pre-qualifying them on the phone. We are, we are walking through our phone scripts. We have it down pat. We act like we know what we're doing. We are confident in our pricing. We're not like, yeah, man, that's, this is really high. Are you ready? You sitting down? All right. Are you ready? It's going to be $4,000. <laughs> that's not how we're going to talk on the phone, right? That is not definitely not way we're going to talk on the phone. So we got to make sure that we are being smart with how we are um, talking on the phone, make sure we have our phone scripts down. Um, all this is super duper important. So those are some things that I just had bullet pointed out here that I wanted to hit on tonight. So if you all have any questions about Christmas lights, um, any questions at all, um, definitely start ask, asking them and then we will, um, I will start uh, hitting it here. Uh, DJ put, he liked the pitch hopper. Uh, my guys only use the pitch hopper. Yeah, a lot of guys went with the pitch hopper and it's kind of funny because um, I have a good friend of mine that actually helps me teach classes named Donovan, and he was so against the, the pitch hopper last year. So I bought a pair of the pitch hoppers because I knew a lot of people were using them. And as a trainer, I got to give you the equipment that they have. And he was sitting there and he was showing all the ways that you can make this thing fail. He was showing it and he was saying how stupid this thing was and it ain't no good and blah, 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 blah. And um, the next training I went down, he had like 10 in there. Um, he loved them. And so they work really well. Um, but again, they are a tool and we have to be careful so we don't fall off roofs. Um, and we still should be tied off even if we are using the pitch hopper, um, even if we're using the, sh the cougar paws, because again, we don't want to fall off. The last thing I want you to do is fall off. Never use the pitch hopper except during training. Use the goat every day last year i never used the pitch hopper um used both last year love the pitch hopper um when should i start throwing out the money bushes for christmas lights um i would probably start around um i would probably start um kind of around um hmm um, i would probably start around october-ish as before i would even start putting too many out um, and then November, I would be plastering them things everywhere. Um, pricing wise, where are you lending your foot? Again, I want to be around eight to twelve dollars a, a a foot. Um, if we're cheaper than that, especially with gas prices and the cost of everything that's going up, um, we're not going to be making no money. And I want you to be making money because here's the deal: if you can't sell it at eight dollars, you're probably not going to be able to sell it at six dollars. Um, so that's why I just push it to eight and sell it at eight. And, you know, again, we're not selling on price. If we're selling on price, we're probably not going to get too far. We're selling on emotion, right? We don't know what that person's last Christmas is. We don't know any of that stuff. So um, we don't know the memories that are going to be made by having Christmas lights up. So, again, we're not selling on price, but we're selling six or eight to ten dollars, eight to twelve dollars a foot. Pro party rental. How do you or your uh, quoting payment processing services? Excel or is a good program you use? Um, a lot of people use Jobber. Jobber works really well for this. Um, it's probably one of the best CRMs that I know. Um, Marquette, I'm not 100% how sure good Marquette's going to be for Christmas lights. Um, I do know some people that use it. Um, that does okay. Um, and uh, the side of um, response bid, it's a little tough for response bid. So um, Jobber, a lot of people use Jobber. The only problem with Jobber is, is it's kind of harder to do the package wise. Um, it can be a little bit tough, but it can definitely be done. When should I launch my Google ads for Christmas lights? Um, you can launch them at any time, Paul. Um, they're probably not going to get too much clicked on now. Um, even if you spent a couple hundred bucks, you know, this month and next month, you never know. This is a lot of times <coughs> when the HOAs and that are starting to hit. So it's not a bad idea to, you know, hit your AdWords. And even if you only put them on for a hundred dollars a month or something, so that way you're not killing it too bad. But then when November comes, we're going to 
we're going to turn them all the way up as far as we can go. November 1st, I'm putting out 200 signs. November 15th, another 200 signs. Um, while I get business paperwork in order, license, insurance, etc., and work on my Google My Business, what materials should I stick up on? Uh, more specifically, what color of lights? I ordered a thousand starter put, but um, comes with soft white. Warm white is where you're going to be at. Um, probably 80 to 90 percent is going to be warm white. Some of it's going to depend on you know how you sell it, but most of the time people want warm white. That's what people want, so that's what we give them. Um, can you realistic run a solo operation? Maybe get a guy for bigger jobs. It can be tough um, trying to answer the phone, trying to um, make sure you got the, all the stuff, but it can be done. Um, DJ pretty much did 25000 last year, 25000 25000 or thirty last year, pretty much by himself. He did hire a couple people to help him out here and there, um, but most of that was pretty much all by himself. There was a day or two that I went with him to get some film and, uh, make fun of him, but yes, that's kind of all it was. There's a new CRM called Tinsel. It's for Christmas lights. This first year looks good. Yeah, I've seen it. I haven't seen it in place myself. Um, I worry about bugs sometimes, and where's all that data going, and how well is it stored for that data? Not to say it's not going to be good, but you know, sometimes when you overload stuff, it gets overloaded is it better to start out with c9 or c7 and how do you gauge um, which one would be better this is actually kind of a hot topic right here um you know we've always done c9s because it is um because when we first started the c9s were way brighter way better the whole nine yards but honestly the c7s are just as bright as the c9s um, and you really can't tell the difference between a C9 and a C7 other than the size. And even if you don't know the size, you're not going to know the difference. Um, and yeah, they're cheaper, but I'm not really worried about the cheaper part of it. I'm, as long as the product is there, um, the C7s are definitely a thought to go with. Um, just because, you know, it is a smaller bulb. There is some things you can do with a C7 that you can't do with a C9. Um, and that would be, for instance, if you're on a vinyl siding house, you can do it as a gingerbread around stuff. It'll slide right underneath that J channel for the the uh, the, the aluminum or the vinyl siding. So that's a thing. They're not as heavy. They, they, they're a lot less um, as heavy. And so um it is a good thought to think about maybe going c7 versus c9 um you know last year there was a shortage of the c7s a little bit in which there was a shortage of everything um and so we don't know what's going to be short this year but those are some options to think about with the c7 versus c9 if you put a c7 on a house and a c9 on a house you're not going to be able to tell the difference of brightness wise they're, they're both pretty bright um so you know i do know people that do c7s um there is people out there that do c7 so that is definitely an option to do c7s um c7s are you know they're 20 30 cents cheaper but it's not like i say i'm not so much worried about that is is it is it's a fact that you know the one nice thing is, is if you're doing your house, you can do that. If you do them with bushes, it's, you already have them set up. You can just put them right into bushes and hammer down and keep right on going. Trying to save up for Christmas for a pressure washing rig next year. Figure this might help. It can definitely help. Um, the beautiful thing about um, Christmas lights is, is they're great pressure washing customers. Um, not so much the other way. Pressure washing tr customers are not really great Christmas light customers, but press Christmas light customers are amazing Christmas that. Um, and, you know, I've had some guys start out with Christmas lights and they started hiring people. I know you had said you were by yourself. Um, and then they ended up doing $100,000 $100, the first year, right? 
And so that's uh, that might be, you never know. It depends on your area, um, all that good stuff. In your training, do you offer phone scripts? I do go over the phone scripts. Um, I go over this pretty big because this is something that I know people struggle with. Um, and so this is one thing that we do. Uh, slight selling lights versus selling for customers to purchase and keep. Do you recommend both or just one? Um, we do lights as a service. Um, so we bring the lights, we install the lights, we fix the lights, we take the lights, and they're my lights. Um, and then next year, I charge you the same amount, and we do the same thing, and I don't have the cost of lights next year. So it is best to... Um, um, do them as a service or aka kind of lease them we're not really leasing them or rent them because then if something happened it can be come back on us as a problem so that's why we do this as a service it is a full exclusive service that includes exclusive service that includes everything and so um, this is definitely something that we got to think about um, of that so Yes, um, we are going there. Speak of the devil. A client just asked if I offer Christmas lights. <laughs> Absolutely we do. Um, <laughs> I'm talking, to, I'm learning about them now. Um, yes, we do do Christmas. Yes, that's awesome. Um, discount for the second year. Some people do, some people don't. Um, I get, always gave a three year discount because I want, I like the contracts. Um, and the contracts is actually how I actually sold my business for more. Um, and so I would give a 10 to 15% discount from all the three years if they signed up for a three year discount. Um, I got people that don't give a discount at all and that's fine too. Donovan don't give a discount. Um, and he's, you know, he's going to do a million dollars in Christmas lights this year. So it's, it's all in what you want. It's, um, you know, if you don't want to, you don't have to, um, it's just a way that you don't have to, um, some people do, some people don't. And it's, it's, you, there is no, you know, right or wrong. Um, in fact, some people go up, you know, some people raise their prices from year one to year two. Um, if you're in an area that allows them to do that, then more power to you, make more money, right? And, you know, that's something too that, you know, usually most people are starting out at $8 a foot and then by the middle of November, they're raising their prices and because they're so booked up and, you know, and that's an, another question that isn't being asked, but you know, do I just quit answering my phone? No, you don't quit answering your phone. The best thing you do is, is you keep raising your prices. Um, I got people, I know people that have gotten $20 a foot. Um, I know people, I know when I talked to the guy in, in um, Denver, he was up to $14 a foot, $12, $14 a foot. And people are still saying yes. And the beautiful thing about those customers is when they come back next year, they're still paying 14, 10, 10, 12, 14 dollars a foot. Um, and so, you know, if we are running out, if we only have so much time to install and we only have so many installers, then we only can put up so many lights. So let's get those customers with the high dollar prices and not the, the, uh, the cheap eight dollar prices, right? We want to fill the customers up with eight, ten, twelve dollars versus, you know, six or eight dollars a foot. Do you offer discounts to install in October? So this kind of goes back to that one. Some people do, some people don't. I did. So, like, when I pushed for my Christmas light cards, I was giving people 10% off to go ahead and install in October um, because then I knew I would have more in there. So that's why I did that for them. Um, Jeff says, great idea. My last job was a $10,000 job for one house. <laughs> Uh, that is awesome. You know, that is amazing. And that's one of those things that it can, you, if you ask for it, you, you will only get it if, if you ask for it. If you don't ask for it, if you don't do packages, if you're not doing the things that I say to do of a package of, you know, even if they just say, I want the lights on top, we're still going to quote the trees and we're still going to quote, um, light, um, 
ground lights. We're still going to quote everything and let them tell us no. We're not going to say, no, nope, we're not going to do that. You know, that's not what we're going to do. No, nope, that's what we're going to do. We're going to offer them everything. Packages is huge. If you're not offering packages, you're leaving money on the table, just like if you're doing any other services. If you're doing pressure washing, window cleaning, any other services out there, and you're not offering packages, you're leaving money on the table. Million installing or selling install business on the install side of things. What are the profit margins like for Christmas lights? So <clears throat> kind of a rough is a third of the price is kind of your cost for um, your lights, your marketing, um, that kind of stuff. Um, the middle third is for the labor side of things of getting the lights up. And then your last third is profit. Um, it's pretty stupid. It's very profitable. Um, it's definitely worth doing Christmas lights. Um, do cougar paws work on tile roofs? That I'm not a, I, they do, I don't know. We don't have no tile. We have one roof around here that's tile roof that I did, but it was not like this. It was flat roof. Um, and, you know, I am not 100% on the tile roof. Are trees quoted by the foot? Yes, that's how I quote them. Um, depending on how tall they are, we're going to go, you know, anywhere from $35 to $50 a foot um, per foot of tree. So if it's a if it's a big pine tree or a big um, tree that don't get naked, that don't lose its leaves, we're going to charge that one from 40 to 50 bucks a, a foot. Um, if it's a tree that does lose its leaves, we're going to be, you know, 30 to $40 a foot. Um, we're going to be in those ranges. What kind of packages are you offering? Um, are they discounted for more stuff like ground lights, reef? No, we're not really discounting anything. Um, we're just going to offer it. So, for instance, like this house here, it would be the roof line would be, say, um, you know, $1,000. Um, each reef is... 350 to 500 dollars a piece so right now we got 700 dollars worth of reefs um, we're going to be you know we can be a little bit cheaper on ground lights you know six dollars a foot there um, and that's where we're going to be at um, on bushes we're going to be we're going to try to figure out how many strands and we're going to be 30 to 50 dollars per strand for our bushes um, our bushes are ones that these are going to be our callbacks. So that's why we go $40, $50 on the bushes. Um, we don't really want the bushes because the bushes are going to be our callbacks. So that's why we want them to be higher. I commented on an old post and you had where I tried to use the links for Christmas lights and for vampire clips. Yeah, my one website got hacked. Um, Christmas lights help got hacked and that's where all my links were um, if you go to um, christmaslights.io um, I'm going to be doing more and more there so christmaslights.io um, I'm going to be putting way more stuff up there um, so that way um, I think I have a, a link to tools there um, and then I also have links to the Christmas lights so um, if you have any Christmas lights, go to christmaslights.io, and it'll say buy lights, and then that's where you can buy your light set there. Um, it's where I have everything. I have to go back and fix a bunch of stuff. I haven't fixed it yet. Would you transition from renting a storage unit to buying your own property? Um, if you can. Um, I mean, it's a good investment to do. It's definitely... Um, better than giving somebody else money. They didn't work, yeah. What's your preference? What's your preference? Face up, face down, face out. Um, my preference, um, so <coughs> when I use the universal clips, my preference were down. Um, it looks, I think it looks better when it shines down onto the building. Um, it kind of gives a nice good glare if you look right here um so up here in the top they these are all pointing up and you really can't see them on the building but if you see this one here back in the corner and it's shining on the building it's giving a glow out on that building it'll do that all the way along the roof now 
for speed and to get things done and get things up faster, that's why we point them up. Um, because now we can pre-bulb and pre-clip, and now we're not taking an hour to pre or to clip and bulb at the job. We're taking that and putting that time somewhere else, and now we can do more installs that way. So um, this is one reason why the steeple is getting so much light is because all these lights are shining up, and that's how that is. I have never gotten a call back for bushes or landscape lighting. Always have to turn a bulb. Yeah, well, you use them old lights a couple times, they'll start biting you in the butt. What kind of spacing do you typically use? And so this kind of goes back to the 15 or 12 inch. Um, so here's my theory behind the 12 versus 15. I personally think 12 inches looks a little bit better. But I can show you pictures. I don't think I have a picture of uh, on here. But I have a picture that has 12 and 15. And nobody can tell the difference of what the difference of 12 versus 15 is. Um, so I don't look at the 12, 15 inch ver um, for the price wise. Oh, I'm saving, you know, out of 100. I don't have to put 20 up. But what I do look at is, is the safety factor. So if I do 15 inch and I do 100 feet, I only got to reach over that roof or climb up that ladder or whatever um, 80 times versus 100 times. So the safety factor of me reaching over that roof 20 less times is obviously a huge factor for me. So the safety factor is I'm only reaching on that roof 20 less times over 100 versus um, I'm doing it 100 times. So that's kind of my thought behind the, the two, the bulbs um, there. We love our Christmas like customers. They are allergic to money um, and they will spend tons of money. Um, I know Jason has done weddings with the same Christmas like customers and they just like give, they like puking you up a bunch of money. And so it's pretty awesome. Um, in year one, would you steer customers to warm white? That's what most people are gonna pick. I want to offer more, but don't know how to gauge what to buy. Your warm white is where all of your stuff is going to be at, 90% of it. That's a great point about the safety, yeah. Like I say, you know, the safety side of it of, you know, like I, even this roof here, you know, I did one side, DJ did the other side, um, and just not have to reach over. You know, there was a lot of light stuff through here, and I didn't have to reach over as much because we were using 15 inches. Um, and especially if we're in some sketchy areas and, you know, it might be hard to get tied off or we're, you know, going up them dormers or any of that kind of stuff. So the safety point is definitely why I like the, the 15 inch. Um, for the C7 lines, do you remove the bulbs for next year's insulation? Um, it all stays together. We pull it all down, put it in a garbage can or put it into crates, whatever, however we're doing it. Um, and next year we put them right back up. And so the next year is usually easier to do the second year than it is the first year. Um, because if we take down the right way, so if we always take down on one side of the house and we go to the other side, we lay it all out, it should fit right back up to where it was at. Um, so that's how we can do that. All right. Do you use a roof ladder um, that's called the goat um, you can use the hook the 50 pound hook that goes onto the the ladder that weighs 300 pounds or 100 pounds um, or you can use the goat that weighs six pounds and it's way lighter um, and it works a lot better um, i would recommend the goat over a roof ladder um, just because the the lot it's it weighs like six or 10 pounds is the whole thing that's all it weighs depending on how long it is um so i would recommend that over the other side of ways if you want to go check out i do have all the training dates up that i will have um i got one class in indy um in um, in person class and then i got two in raleigh and they're all up if you go to christmaslights.io and then go to the training or if you go to christmaslights.io slash i think this one will work slash training will take you there too um so those are some things if you're looking for that i also have um, my online course 
I'm, I'm getting ready to revamp it like here shortly. How many feet of lighting and many should you buy off the start? Worried about scrambling for lights during the season? Um, depending on where you're at, pro party rental, um, in the beginning of season, you'll be fine. It'll be more toward the middle and the end of season is when everybody starts um, trying to scramble around. Um, you know, depending on how much you want to buy, um, it, it just depends. Um, I were actually... If you buy $6,000 for the first class for Indy, you'll get free training. Um, so if that's an option. Um, but again, I'm more about, you know, I can worry about that versus saving my money for marketing. I want to dump more money in marketing. Uh, marketing is, uh, you know, if I'm going to dump money, I'm going to be dumping it into marketing. Um, the product, we can get the product. Um, you might have to pay more through the season, but I can get the product. Um, and here's the thing. If we're charging 8 to 10 12 $13 a foot, even if product is a little bit more, it's not going to hurt me. Um, but if I can't get the customers, that's kind of where I'm bigger on the marketing side of things. So just a thought. Not to say if you got money to put aside for, you know, get a couple starter packs, get some stuff. Um, most of the places... Um, is about one to two days shipping, and they get it out pretty quickly. Um, so those are some things to think about. How do you approach commercial customers, postcard, cold visit, referrals? Um, AdWords is one way. LinkedIn is another way. Cold email marketing. That's how I got all my commercial work. That's how I got all my HOAs. Um, that's how I got all that information. Any other trainings in the West Coast? Nope. I did one a couple weeks ago out West. Um, but that's the only one I'll be doing out there. Out of Fairfield County, Connecticut. Gotcha. So Indianapolis is probably going to be the closest for you. Um, what's the earliest date for installation for residential customers on your experience? Uh, October 1st, baby. And there's people that actually do it earlier than that. Uh, depending on part of country. If you're up in a part of the country that gets snow, there's people that put up in September. Um, but most of the time, October. And they're complaining about that. All of you watch that Dubai point Uh Any discounts for two people attending the training? Yes, I do. If you have um, it, the, I don't have it up on the Indy. If you're coming to the Indy class, let me know. Um, but what I for the Raleigh class and I will do it for that one if it's a spouse or an employee training the employee is one day training but if you do that one um, I might have you just buy the Raleigh one and then let me know so then I know where to put those people at Facebook was skipping around finally sub to okay excited for lights this year ton of money rolled into Florida you guys have a bunch. Um, cold calling, it's not scary. They are waiting for your call for real. Um, don't be afraid of no, right? Um, that's a good point, Stacy. You know, a lot of people are so scared to call. Um, just call. You never know. They might be waiting for your call. Um, do you use mini nets on bushes, or is that not a good idea? It's not really a good idea to do that. Um, you can, but they're a pain in the neck. How do you get people to book early? Ask. Jason was really putting stupid thought into this. Was wondering your thoughts on offering event lighting as well. Um, I can be available year round. Or is event and Christmas lighting different market? No. Wedding, wedding lights, um, all that stuff is huge. Um, even landscape lighting can go well with this here. Um, I mean, it's, it's definitely something to think about. Definitely something to think about. Serious thought, not stupid. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, wedding lights, um, I've done several wedding lights. Um, DJ, we actually, we just did a tree the other day. Um, I did a tree, DJ and I did a tree, um, for a wedding. It was, it ended up being like, Twelve hundred thousand or twelve hundred bucks. It took us like two hours, um, and 
You know, he got like three pressure washing jobs from doing that one job. At, it was at a, it was at a golf course, and this tree was huge. Um, it was huge. <coughs> Love letting whites. Um, the prophets, the stupid prophet. I lit a few houses for wedding this year. Yep. People will do that. Um, and that's some other things. Like you can buy the little cherry trees that do changing color with it and rent them out. And you can do all kinds of stuff with this stuff here. Wedding lights are huge. Start networking in your area. Yep. Um, from someone who does event lighting, we use similar lighting pricing. It's just different. Yep. Um, I would really like to have as much as the year to do as I can. Yeah. But uh, other than that, I'm planning on putting, um, being back on Tuesday nights. I know I got a lot of people that come out here and listen to me on Tuesday nights. Um, if you want to come on, if you want to give a voice, I'm more than willing. I'll probably have Fred come on. I'll probably have, um, I'll probably have Donovan come on. Um, I'll definitely, anybody that wants to come on and talk about Christmas lights, um, I'll have some other experts on. Um, and then I will, um, I'm actually going to do this as a podcast too. Um, I got to figure out how to make a podcast work for this. Um, so I will be figuring that out and hopefully getting this up as a podcast. So then that way, if you want to listen to it or you want to, um, do it anytime, that would be definitely something to think about, um, what I'm going to be doing in the future for you all. Um, any place to add photos, the GMB if you don't have any, um, if you join pressure wash help doc, if you join my membership, I do have some Christmas light photos in there. Um, Donovan's given me some photos that I can, people can use. Um, so I do have some photos. Um, they're not amazing. Um, but there is some photos that you can use. Um, so yeah, quick question. Will I need separate insurance policy? You shouldn't need a whole separate insurance policy. You should be able to get an add on to your current one. Um, so then that way you don't have to spend a bunch more money for it. So that's kind of what I've been told. I don't know how true it is, but that's what the insurance guy has told me. And that's how I ran. That's what they did for my insurance too. Um, so but again, like I say, Tuesday nights at nine, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, um, subscribe to the channel. I'll probably keep doing it on Facebook too. Um, cause I see right here's a Facebook person. <laughs> um, do you get bonded? No, we don't need to get bonded for the Christmas lights. Um, we've never had to get bonded for it. So, um, yeah, but other than that, I hope you all have a great night. Um, and if you need anything, let me know. We'll talk at you all later.